impact you see politics actually having on the, uh, on the markets right now? Is there any? Uh, basically, what you're going to see is that um, many investors are going to actually hold back in terms of um, their positions, whether they're going to buy into the markets or not. Because as you, I mean, as you've seen, the the current political terrain is completely messy. Uh, we can't really tell what's going to happen. There are serious cracks in the coalition government, and legal analysts and pundits are actually divided on who's right and who's wrong. And um, this, in essence, actually makes the, the, the government to focus more on politics and actually growth and development in terms of the stimulus, stimulus package that most of us have, have actually been waiting for to be able to uh, you know, be the pillar that the economy needs to actually grow and, and, and go forth. So we've seen actually the market dropping by at least um, 10 more points um, this week. We're seeing, um, it, despite the fact that uh, many companies are actually going to be announcing the results this week, especially the banks and all, uh, the effect of what's actually happening is actually going to be great in terms of um, how the, quarter, the, the starting quarter, the second quarter of this year is actually going to be. Despite all of that that's unfolding, though, I mean, we've had reports saying that uh, low interest rates in developed markets are paving the way for foreign investors to start picking up bargains at the NSC uh, as local investors watch from the sidelines. To what extent are you actually seeing this play out where yesterday foreign investors were virtually absent and local investors dominated trading activity? Uh, I think... What's happening is that with foreign investors looking at um, the political scenario, they basically want to protect the capital. And uh, what you experienced is that there was basically capital flight from the uh, international investors. But what I think the local Soviet investors learned from uh, the 2007 post-election violence is that uh, they can actually you know, be able to take bargains and see how they can uh, restrategize uh, their positions as far as the equity and, and the bond market is concerned. The most unfortunate thing is that in such times the, the accessibility to information that is relevant in terms of investment at the equity market is actually skewed and only those who are able to get it fast are able to make the right decisions. Well, let's take a look at this, Leon, with you here, because, I mean, the, the report uh, also suggested that local investors are staying out because they're faced with rates that are an average at, of, what, 14.85%. Mm. So it makes no sense for them to climb into equities if they're using debt financing. Yeah, many saying this, uh, you know, with this, we've got Kenya's financial architecture under scrutiny. It needs major restructuring at this point. It's something that you highlighted the last time you were here as well. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, they, they've got this wide, you know, lending rates are sitting at 14.5%, but deposit rates or treasury bill rates are sitting at like 7%. So uh, where, where does the local investor put his money? Well, he, he, if he's got the cash, he might put it into equity, but if he doesn't, he's definitely not going to be borrowing to, to, to invest because it makes it very difficult. You know, it's a complete different situation for, for a foreign investor, as you highlighted earlier. Yep. Uh, Steve, the suggestion that's been made, though, is that possibly we should see pension funds and insurance companies companies offering alternative financing, that this would give banks some competition uh, on the road forward. Is that an option uh, to, you know, that is viable in your books? Um, the pension fund and the insurance um, sector has actually been a place where many, many investors have been looking at in terms of getting funds for development and things like that. But what people need to understand is that our legal terrain as far as um, getting into the pension fund and insurance sector is actually very tricky. And uh, most of it is controlled by the government. I mean, and how to invest, uh, like for example, how to invest pensions funds and things like that. Housing uh, finance came up with a product that actually pegs you know, mortgage issues on, on, on one's pension. But with what's happening in the government right now, with a lot of uh, bureaucracy and red tape. And right now, everyone's uh, attention being focused on the constitution and the dilemma in the coalition government. I don't think uh, this is going to be any viable until the, the red tape and the bureaucracy and the political bickering is actually sorted out. For now, as you said, company earnings in the spotlight. We've got East African breweries expected to release numbers later this evening. What are your broad expectations on that front today? Um, I'm looking at um, East African breweries actually releasing a I mean, good results in terms of our profits, but uh, when in terms of growth, of um, I mean, the overall growth or the overall bottom line of the company, um, um, probably a reduction of uh, how things have been because 2009 was a very tricky year for many of the manufacturing companies. Uh, also, the aspect of um, you know market share, we're seeing um, a, a new, I mean, the re-entry of a company that has been. Uh, complete rival for East African breweries. They've hired a PR company in terms of looking how they can get back into the Kenyan and East African market. So we're trying to see how EBL will actually be. And in terms of market share control, that will be actually what people will be looking at in terms of statistics and numbers.